Hello, I'm Lucilla Ronai and welcome to another Museum From Home because I am a conservator working from home. So today I want to talk to you about a very particular item in the National Maritime Collection, a letter written by Fanny Bly, and I also want to talk to you about what we did to get it ready for display in an exhibition that we recently deinstalled. So, I just want to tell you a little bit about the object first. It is a letter written on one sheet of paper, both sides, written with iron gall ink. So iron gall ink is really interesting because it's been used for a millennia to write on paper substrates. And so the majority of the most valuable documents in the world are written with iron gall ink. And in some severe instances, iron gall ink is known to actually eat through paper substrates. It's got lots of different deterioration mechanisms, but the worst case scenario is when the ink literally eats away at the paper and the paper pretty much disappears or falls out and we call this lacing. Fortunately, this letter is not in that condition, but we are seeing some sort of changes because of the iron gall ink. So the letter was written by Fanny Bly after the death of her father, and it was to present a ring to a acquaintance, George Sutter, and was written around 1839 to 1845. We only have a date range for this. So it was selected for display by the curators at the Maritime Museum to go into the Bly Hero Villain exhibition, which we only deinstalled recently. So I'm just going to take you through some of the things we noticed, the treatment I got to do on it, and also what is involved with preparing an exhibition, because uh, maybe it's not something you know about. So first of all, it was selected, so it came to the conservation lab and I investigated it. I used lots of different light sources, including raking light, which means we shine, so we have the object and we shine the light at an angle from it, and it sort of casts these shadows, and so we can see the undulations and almost the topography of the paper. It's a really great way to see folds and creases and also what we call cockling or planar distortion so the letter's not really flat. So I've got some great images that illustrate this and it shows us the letter was folded and the ways that the folds fitted together because we also actually have the envelope in the collection. So if you want to know more about the letter and the actual contents of what it says, the full letter is transcribed on the Maritime Museum Collection website so check it out. So we also used transmitted light, which means that we have the object and we're shining light from underneath and we're observing it from the other side. And this is a really great way to see uh, different thicknesses in the paper, if there's paper layers, um, also if there's maybe some repairs or historical uh, treatments that have been done to it. I could see there was some other things going on. So there was the original paper the letter was written on, but there seemed to also be darker patches, which we were thinking were historic repairs. And it was interesting because they were quite big and they also seemed to be covering up some parts of the text. Also, when we were looking with raking light, we could see there was a secondary paper that was lifting from the edges and some parts of the text were a bit hard to read, a bit hazy. So we worked out that there was a complete repair, what we call a facing repair or lining on both the front and the back. So as a paper treatment, we sometimes do line really fragile paper items, but we usually only do this on one side and we usually try not to cover anything up like text. So this was a very interesting previous repair. I have a feeling it was done before it was acquired into the collection and it might not have been done by a conservator. It could have been done by someone wanting to do some quick repairs so the letter was in one piece. So with discussions with the curator, we decided if it was safe to remove this facing repair, to remove it completely because it would improve Improve the visual readability of the letter and also we weren't sure what this secondary paper was. Was it conservation grade? Was it acid free? Was it going to affect the object? Who knows? So here is a time lapse showing how I very carefully removed this lining paper. Definitely do not recommend trying this at home. It was very nerve wracking. Luckily, whatever treatment had been done to it in the past was reversible. A lot of our treatments we try and make sure they're reversible because in the future the treatments that we might do might no longer be appropriate. Materials and technology and knowledge changes so it's really important that if in 30 years time a conservator comes across a treatment that I've done if they decide that it's no longer appropriate they can safely remove it. So fortunately whoever had done this in the past did make sure that it was safe to be removed. This also fortunately removed all those hideous previous repairs. Pro I probably shouldn't say hideous. Anyway, just, just pretend you didn't hear that. Um, <laughs> 
some treatments don't go great. So I was fortunately able to remove all this stuff and it revealed that the letter was actually in two pieces. Whenever a letter is folded or creased, that becomes an area of weakness and over time the paper can start splitting along fold lines and that looks like what has happened here. So the lining and the previous repairs they'd done had been to fix tears but also to join the two bits of the letter together. So now that I've removed this face and repair, we had to work out how to get it all back into one piece again and make sure the tears weren't going to get any worse because this item was ultimately going to be handled and displayed. So uh, my conservation colleague Katie Wood performed the repairs to the work. The bread and butter of a paper conservator is wheat starch paste and Japanese tissue paper. These are the tried and tested methods that we use and they last and they don't affect the object in a bad way and also more to the point it's reversible. The only thing is though iron gall ink is very susceptible to further damage if you introduce moisture or certain types of solvents so we had to be very careful with what we do. So my colleague Katie performed the repairs and did almost single fiber repairs to stitch the photograph together avoiding all the text. So this was good because it meant that we weren't affecting the iron gall ink but it also meant we weren't covering up any of the writing which is really important because if there's a letter with writing you want to be able to read it. So then we had completed the treatment, we documented it, wrote about it, photographed it front and back. We also, after treatment, got the photographers at the Australian National Maritime Museum to digitize it in the highest possible quality because while one side of the letter was on display, the curators also wanted the other side to be on display too because it had writing on both sides. So the letter was shown on one side and there was a reproduction of the other side next to it. We made sure that the object had a support so it was sitting on something that was conservation grade so it wasn't going to negatively affect the object. We made sure it was in a case where the lighting was set below 50 lux because paper items are really susceptible to, to light damage. You might have noticed maybe some of your old newspapers changing over time and going yellow and becoming brittle. We also made sure halfway through exhibition we flipped the letter around to show the other side and this also means that light exposure is even for both sides of the object. And then of course we got a different reproduction of the other side letter next to it. It was put on display beside the ring that the letter was sent with. We made sure that during the exhibition we constantly were monitoring it and we also control the environment this letter was displayed in which includes the temperature and relative humidity so we make sure it's optimal for the object but it also matches human comfort levels because ultimately we want people to come see the exhibition and then once the exhibition shut it was time to deinstall it so I was able to then receive the object back in the conservation lab I did a quick condition check it was absolutely fine. I created some new housing for it and then it was sent back to storage until it will be on display next. I just want to leave you with a sign off of Fanny Bly on the letter to George Sutter and it's really beautiful. She says, my dear sir, with affectionate regards, most truly yours, Fanny Bly. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoyed finding out what we do to prepare objects for exhibition and the treatment that we did on the Fanny Bly letter.